Welcome everyone to Bridge City Church online worship experience. I'm Pastor Eric from the Murraysville campus. And I'm Maria Armstrong from the White Oak campus. And we wanna say happy Father's Day. You know, we're excited to celebrate fathers, men, and really men of God, not just dads, but men of God as well. We're gonna hear a message from Pastor Rick about being intentional men of God as well. Mm -hmm. In fact, my wife just had a baby a few months ago. Mm -hmm. She so completed cute. her 40 week bodybuilding program. <laughs> Uh, and she, that literally made me a dad. Yeah. So we now we're celebrating our, our third child, and uh, I want to hear from you. How, what does Father's Day mean to you? And tell me a little bit about your dad. My dad, actually, just to jump right into it, my father actually 13 years ago he had a stroke, and um, so he is a little slower at talking now. And w through that experience, I met God, and it was such a cool testimony to to have. But through the experience of having a father who doesn't speak as much, it really taught me so much about just listening and how you don't have to always have the right things to say whenever you're trying to listen or encourage someone. Just being there and listening, because he's the best listener ever. And it just, it really taught me so much about encouraging people and being there for people um, because he is the best listener ever. So you're I love amazing, him very much. amazing father, tends the White Oak campus <laughs> consistently, does, yes. right? So uh, we're so excited to hear about, you know, dads and being mm -hmm. fathers and really being intentional, listening, such a great quality for yeah. any one of us, especially a, a, of us men to listen well, <laughs> not just hear things, but to listen yes. well. And uh, we're gonna encourage all the men out there to continue listening and tuning in, even onto these online worship experiences. We'd love to see you in location at one of our four campuses. Mm -hmm. But if you're joining us for the first time here on the online, we have something for you. Yes, actually, if you are new here, we're so excited that you're here with us today. All you have to do is just click that button, fill out that form, and we will send you a $5 coffee gift card. And also we'll be able to keep you updated on things happening right here at Bridge City Church. One of those coming up at the end of June is the Pittsburgh Mission Trip. Yes. I look forward to the Pittsburgh Mission Trip every single year where we get outside of the walls and go into the communities to reach people. So many stories, testimonies every year of people's lives being touched and transformed. I love seeing people in the church utilizing their gifts. Mm -hmm. And what have you seen through the Pittsburgh Mission Trip in previous years? I've seen so many people taking their first step or their next step in missions and just stepping out and courage and being there to pray for people for the first time ever or give someone some food that is in need. There's so many opportunities to serve in this area. If you have a heart for missions at all and you want to take that baby step but you're not ready to go to another country, it's such a good opportunity. Um, but what have you actually seen at the Murraysville campus? Well, we're actually planning this year. Something we've done previously is we go out onto the trail. We have a trail right behind the Murraysville location right there off 22 and we do trail ministry, trail outreach, handing out snacks, waters, fruit, praying for people. And we've seen so many people's lives touched just by simply offering prayer and a piece of fruit. And uh, we're also going to be buying Italian ice for people who doesn't Ooh. love Italian ice in the end yeah. of June. <laughs> so we're going to be blessing people with that, looking for opportunities to feed people, to meet needs. And also we're doing a vacation Bible school pop-up type Aww. thing with kids camp, uh, celebrating and, and gathering kids together, families together at parks, wanting to share the gospel, pray for people and meet needs wherever we can go and That's everywhere so nice. we go. So we're excited about Pittsburgh Mission Trip. Encourage you to get signed up. There's still time, there's still room for you. The details are on the website. Get signed up to be a part of the Pittsburgh Mission Trip and we will train you, equip you, help you yes. know how to better utilize your gifts and be used as a church and as a group for spreading the gospel out into our community. With that, we're gonna jump into worship, yeah. worshiping our Heavenly Father. Uh, would you mind leading us in prayer of course as I will. we join? Of course I will. God, we just thank you so much for who you are. Um, we thank you for what you've done for us, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity that we get to worship you, Jesus. I just pray for everyone listening to my voice right now, God, that they would just engage in you, Lord, that they would just have tunnel vision for who you are, God, that they would take their next step with you in this time of worship. In Jesus' name, amen. How many of you know there is power in the name of Jesus? The name above every other name. There's a name that levels mountains. Calls out highways through the sea. I 
I've seen his power unravel bands right in front of me. Thank you, Jesus. There's a faith that stands divine. Sins glide to his knees. I've seen his praise unravel shine. Right off my feet, yeah. That's the power of your name. Just to mention makes a way. Giants fall and struggles break. There is healing. That's the power that I claim. It's the same that rolled the grave. There's no
Sounds so good. Cause he's never let me down. He's faithful through. There's nothing like this sound. So why would he? He won't. How many of you know he won't fail? was 
Against every weapon that's formed, the thief and his plans will pass over. He sees the red on the door. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Nothing 
We're getting ready now to transition into another form of worship, which is the giving of our tithes and offerings. I know personally that I've seen God move so much in my own personal life whenever I step out in faith and give, specifically whenever I'm feeling like I can't and I'm holding my fist closed. I know whenever I open my fist and let God move through, He moves in beautiful ways. Amen. And giving is something that really it's an aspect of who God the Father is. Yeah. He is generous. He is a giver. And as we celebrate Father's and Father's Day today, really for all of us to realize we can leave a legacy of generosity, leaving something and putting something inside the next generation as we represent God the Father to our children, to the next generation, That's really to good. all those around us. It's we're leaving something behind when we leave, not just money, but we're leaving a legacy of generosity. So as you consider giving, there's several ways to do that, but we're gonna pray for the offering as we get ready to give. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a generous Father. Yes, God, that you've shown us the perfect way of giving, of sacrificing, of being generous. Mm -hmm. Father, I pray for every single person, every one of us listening and watching, God, that we would follow your example of being generous, of sacrificing and giving, and leaving a legacy for those around us, those who watch us, and Father, for the next generation to have a place where they can worship you, hear your word, and gather as your people. Mm -hmm. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This time, let's get ready to hear a message from our lead pastor, Pastor Rick. Godly Father figure to me looks like um, someone who is obviously committed to God and his church. You can tell by where they spend their time, where they spend their money, uh, what their priorities are. They're a great provider in both time and resources and also wisdom. The way to be a godly father figure in my mind is, is just to set that example. I can't say something that I wouldn't do myself. So I have to practice what I'm preaching. Whether you like it or not, you're a leader. You're leading by example. It's also somebody who is looking to assist the people behind them, the next generation, wanting to make an impact. They choose the things they do so that they can impact others. And man, they demonstrate the characteristics of Christ both directly and indirectly. Somebody who leads by example, who you know is going to God first in tough situations. You're a, a, an encourager, very compassionate. You'd want a man's wrath to ruin your relationship with people and your walk with God. Someone who's faithful to where their feet are, so they're present, they're available, they're empathetic and compassionate, so they just kind of meet you exactly where you're at, try to feel for you right then and there. And also somebody who is um, available, somebody who um, takes the time. You can't, uh, you can't have an influence if you don't put in time. Happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. And thank you everybody for joining us for this time. What a great and awesome worship experience we're having here. And just so thankful for everybody that makes this possible. Today's message isn't just about dads and families. It's to all men, uh, authentic men. Uh, we live in a culture and we live in a time where masculinity is challenged and Christianity is being challenged like never before. It's no coincidence that this, both things are being challenged in our culture and in our society. Because after all, if you can take away Christianity and take away true masculinity, which takes away who God really is in our culture. And we are all about restoring and renewing not only the image of God, but also the image of what God intended when he created male and female. So here we go. We're going to take a look at authentic 
manhood. That's what we're taking a look at here. And there's a lot of confusion that goes into uh, this with authentic manhood. There's, uh, we live in a chaotic world, literally. Um, I was playing tennis the other day, just to give you an example. And uh, I was playing with some people and I, I, I did something and they were trying to say thank you. What they were trying to communicate to me was um, that, that I was being a good, like if you watch tennis, the, the boys and girls that run around and pick up the balls, they're called a ball boy or ball girl. And they wanted to refer to me as a ball boy, but they didn't know what pronoun to use. So literally, they, got, they were stammered. They're, you're a good ball boy. They didn't know. Finally, they referred to me as a ball child. Okay, I'm just using the exact same term they used. This is to demonstrate the confusion that we have in our culture, in our society of what a real man is. And unfortunately, we use this term toxic masculinity. So we go from, I'm not allowed to call you a man to toxic masculinity. And, and there's both ends of the spectrum are wrong. And so today we want to give some help to all men. What does it mean to be an authentic man? So here we want to launch out of Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. We're going to be talking about Noah. That's right. Noah, the arky arky guy. Yeah, built the arky and put two uh, animals of every kind in the ark. And uh, so here we go. Uh, Hebrews eleven seven. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark, for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. By faith. This is all by faith. It's by a trust in God here. So here's the big idea. Men, all men, not just dads here, all men, will live out authentic, authentic manhood by being devoted to God moved with godly fear, and committed to their household. If as a man I can do these three things, this is what condemns the world. This is what I would say uh, marks the world. Like this is, who, this is what we really are. And it also provides an inheritance for us here. So significant. Now, Hebrews chapter 11 is, is known as the, the, the hall of faith, the heroes of the faith. Now, heroes have three things significant. Number one, they typically have, uh, you could use the word costume, but they have an identity. They have something that they put on and that they wear to identify themselves. Second of all, they have a superpower. Yeah, that's right. Now, I don't know if you had a superpower. If I had any superpower I wanted, I'm going to tell you what I would do. I would, I would have nobody slow down ever going through the Squirrel Hill Tunnels. That's right. I would have people know how to yield properly. And I would have, I, this is the last superpower I want right here. This is most important. I would have people not post stupid things on Facebook. That would be my superpower. Okay, back to real life here. So they have, a, they have something that identifies them. They have a superpower and they have a conflict to win. They have an evil to overcome. As a man, we have an identity to put on, a devotion to God here. We have a superpower being moved with godly fear. And then we have an evil to overcome. And so I'm going to commit and stay committed to my household to do this. So here we go with Noah. Now, these are the three things. They're all found in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. I'm going to refer back to these a lot. But so, so, so Hebrews 11, 7 is the framework here that we have our big idea that I'm going to uncover here. But before I go on, before I go on, hey, Noah, putting all the animals on the ark, what we need to do is right now stop and say thank you to Noah. Because without Noah's obedience to God, we would not have steak, turkey, we would not have chicken, we would not have ribs or pulled pork. Come on, somebody. That's right. So, so without Noah, we wouldn't have any of these things. And so first of all, we just want to show honor and respect, respect to Noah here. Okay, let's go back to Genesis chapter 1 and let's take, or, no, excuse me, Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth and he saw that everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them and put them on earth. And it broke his heart. 
So God was just so sorry. Can you imagine the evil? Can you imagine what was happening? That it was so bad. I mean, right now in our culture, we're living in a postmodern, anti-Christian culture right now where Christianity is, like I said, put down and masculinity is even put down more. There's an outrage against it. And so can you imagine how bad it was there that, 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 that God was going to destroy them? Because as we go on in Genesis chapter 6, verse 7, And the Lord said, I will wipe this human race I have created from the face of the earth. Yes, I will destroy every living thing. All the people, the large animals and the small animals, the scurry on the ground and even the birds. I'm sorry I even made them. But Noah. Oh man, like, but Noah. For all the men watching and listening, I want you to put your name in there. But for Rick Paladin and put your name there. But you and, and, and God created you to be a man of God with integrity and character. And he knew what he was doing. He put you in the right place at the right time for such a time as this. But Noah found favor in the Lord and with the Lord. Yeah, there's, oh, there's, there's kindness. This word favor is, is where we get the word grace. It's the, it's the Old Testament word for grace here. It's divine empowerment here. It's affectionate regard. It's to act graciously towards. Can you imagine everything was so evil, but there was this guy named Noah that God chose here. This, the, Noah had a superpower. It was the favor of God. And isn't that what you and I are really looking for? We're looking for the favor of God in our lives. So where did this favor come from? Glad you asked. It came because every man will experience, everybody, every, every man will experience authentic manhood when he's devoting himself to God, devoted to God, when he's moved with godly fear and he's staying committed to his household. These are the three things. So let's look at the first one here. Devotion. Simple devotion. Now, I know typically it's like, okay, just, you know, you got to read your Bible. You got to stay devoted. You got to go to church. You got to do, do, do. Listen, how about just being devoted? How about just the process of being devoted to God? Verse 9, Genesis 6. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, the only blameless person living on the earth at this time. And he walked in close fellowship with God. Noah was the father of three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. So here we have, here's, defines Noah here. Yeah, he, 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 he gave an account. So this is the account of Noah. Now look, you and I, like this is the account of Rick Paladin. This is the account of you. So when you give an account of you, is righteousness and blamelessness in that account? Or is there other things in that account? But but it says that Noah walked close with God and in close proximity to God. This is devotion. See, when I want to devote my heart to something, I walk in close proximity to that. Yeah, and righteous. It's right standing and conduct and character and blameless. It means undefiled. It means whole. This is the kind of man that Noah was. This is how he found favor with God. And it says also at this time, which literally means in his generation. Let me stop here. I don't know what generation you're a part of. Listen, I'm the last of the baby boomers, last year of it. I think very close to baby boomer here. Can't help it. Yeah, now maybe you're a millennial, maybe you're a Gen X or whatever you may be, Gen Y. Listen, listen, I just want to tell you this. Your generation doesn't need to define you. God can define you by your devotion to him. Even though Noah's generation was evil, oh, horridly evil, that didn't define him. He was being defined by his proximity to God. Yeah, so I don't know where you've come from, but this is where you're going. Close proximity with God here. See, Noah walked with God. I believe, let's try to put some flesh on this. Let's double click on this one. Let's drill down a little bit. Come on, he walked with God. He made decisions in his life that were God-pleasing, God-honoring here. He had integrity and character. Integrity is what's on the inside. Yes, yeah, see, integrity is being true 
to who God is creating you to be on the inside of you. Character, on the other hand, is what people see on the outside of you. So I'm being true to who God has created me to be in my devotion, the integrity and character. So integrity is on the inside, character is on the outside here. You know one of the biggest compliments my wife Natalie and my children have ever given me, the biggest compliment is this, is that I'm the same person no matter where I am. I'm the same person at home. I'm the same person when I go to the bank or the store. I'm the same person when I'm playing tennis. I'm the same person at work or church or preaching. What you see is what you get. See, that is integrity on the inside and character on the outside. And integrity and character have marked my life. Why? It's come out of devoting myself, a constant devoting myself to God and his ways here. Noah walked with God when nobody else did. See, when you, when you walk with God, with integrity and character, you stand out from the world. It can't help but happen. Yeah, in a world full of lying and deceit and putting you first and doing all these things, it's craziness. But no, I'm going to devote myself to God here. Eight times in Genesis 6 through 9, chapter 6 through 9, it says, God said, or the Lord said to Moses, depending on your translation. So eight times it says, God said. This happened out of Noah's commitment to God here. So out of Noah's commitment to God and his devoting himself to God on a regular basis, God regularly said to him, we need more men who are just simply hearing God and saying, this is what God has communicated for me to do. Yes, women may be better multitaskers. They may be better at getting tasks done. They may be better at listening. They may be better at doing many, many things. But listen, as a man of God, you can hear God. You can know what he's saying. You can receive his direction. Yeah, ordinary everyday guys like you and me can do this. That's right. And the result of this is that we have godly values and integrity and character and church matters. See, those are the results of devotion and they help our devotion here. Yeah, and you're going to look foolish at times. But the question is, is who fool, who's fool are you going to be? God's or the world's? I'm going, to, I'm going to look foolish when I follow God, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyhow. But, but let, let me just try to say it this way, is that when we're, de we're devoting ourselves to God, there's a love relationship with God. I love him, and this is, this is just so exciting to me. Yeah, see, just this last week, I, I had the opportunity. I, was, I, I, I took a, a Lyft ride, an Uber, and, I, and, and, and somebody picked me up, and, and we're just talking away. And I'm going to condense the story real simple and sweet for you. In the course of the conversation, it came up what I do for a living, and, it, and God came up. And I didn't have to go to some uh, rote thing I say. It just started oozing out of me what Jesus has done for me and what Jesus has done for my life. And I was so excited to share it. I just started talking about God and, and who he is to me and how I have this love, I, love relationship with him and I'm wide-eyed in wonder. And, and yeah, life is difficult, but I still am enjoying the process of being devoted to God. Listen, authentic manhood has joy attached to it because I'm pleasing God. That's what it is. It's joy. It's life. It's love. It's seeing God and hearing him for who he really is. Okay, let's look at the next one. Now, again, men will experience like authentic manhood. Yeah, uh, being devoted to God and being moved with godly fear. See, that's Hebrews eleven seven says that, that, that Noah was moved. See, godly fear moves us. It does something. And so, men, I'm speaking to you now. We like to get things done here. So Genesis chapter 7, verse 1, so Noah did everything exactly as God commanded him. Yeah, may that be said about you and me. We're men. We like to get things done. God gave him a big task in Genesis 6 with specific instructions. Build this ark one and a half times a football field, four stories high. Yeah, and it was going to take 120 years to build this. Now, how many trips to Home Depot and Lowe's would he have to make? Now, now, 
Well, listen, when God gave Noah this task, there was, there was no uh, or, order, order a new saw, order some lumber to be delivered. No, Noah had to go and, and make a saw. Then he had to make a way to get trees. He couldn't go to Home Depot or Lowe's. He had to go find trees because there wasn't trees where, where he was. So he literally had to go find trees and go outside and get them and bring them. He had to develop an ax. He had to make a saw. Then he had to build the scaffolding. Do you know how long this would have taken here? See, let me just tell you this. Noah had to do a whole bunch of little things so he could do what God asked him to do. Men of God, authentic men, there's no such thing as little insignificant things. There's no such things, no such thing in life as, well, this is little, this is insignificant, this doesn't matter. No, the little things matter. And we do all the little things that we do so we can get to what God wants us to do. But we need to be moved with godly fear. That's what drives us here. Fear of God makes the impossible possible because I know God has tasked me with this and I'm going to be moved with a fear in him and for him here. Yeah, that's what this is. And one of the things in chapter 6, verse 14 that God gave Noah to do, make yourself an ark of gopher wood, make rooms in the ark, cover it inside and outside with pitch. Now this word pitch is an interesting word. It's usually translated tar. That's right, on the outside of the boat, they had to put tar to seal the boat. This is the same word in the Hebrew used for atonement. It's the same word in Hebrew used for reconciliation, for cleansing, for purging. In the New Testament, atonement speaks to about the blood of Jesus Christ. So what he was saying was cover your household with the blood of Christ. Cover your protection, the salvation of who you are, with who God really is, the cleansing, the, pur the purging. Purge everything else out and be moved with the fear of God. And then he told, he told him to use gopher wood. Now I'm going to tell you what gopher wood is. See, he had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And every time that he needed more wood, he would say, hey, it's time to go for more wood. That was my dad joke for the day. I hope you like that one. Yeah, that's what it means here. Go for more wood here. And it was a certain kind of wood. Now, I also want to point out here that what the fear of God is. I know, moving right along. Don't worry. Fear of God. To love what God loves, hate what he hates. But here's the last part of the fear of God. Knowing I'm going to stand before God and give an account. And authentic manhood is marked and we will experience God's favor, and we will experience faith, and we will experience Him in a real way when we're moved with godly fear, knowing I'm going to give an account for my life. Not just in the generation I'm in, but before God Himself. Yeah, 120 years of doing a lot of little insignificant things. If Noah was a real man, just like me, just like many of you. He had to come across once, twice, three times, dozens and dozens and dozens of times. What's the use? Why bother? I don't need this in my life. But he kept going. He kept moving forward. This is what I want to speak to men right now. You may be in a job you don't like, but you keep doing it. Why? Because you have kids at home and, and they're dependent on you. You may be doing a lot of little things at home and it doesn't feel like you're making progress, but you are. Because the little things matter and day by day matters here. Go back to what God asked of you and allow this fear of God to roll through you and inside of you here. It may feel like life's not working, but I want to encourage you to keep going. Keep stepping forward. Keep moving into the chaos that God has created you to step into because God has created us for chaos. We step into it, but with a godly fear. Yeah, that's who we are and that's what we do because that's what authentic manhood is. We are devoted to God and we're moved with godly fear and we do the little things because they matter so that we can get to the God things. 
Now I want to switch gears here and go into our third point about being committed to our household. Authentic men stay committed to their household. It's one thing to make a, a commitment. It's another thing to fulfill the commitment. Authentic man, manhood, they stay committed. We have to define success. <laughs> yeah, we have to define success because many people, they think success is being rewarded. They think success is reaping the harvest. How about we switch our view of success and say, no, me being an authentic man, I am going to continue to sow seeds because when I'm sowing seeds that will reap a harvest, sometime for others, it doesn't even include me. That's what I'm in it for. I'm in this to be a success, but I'm a success when I'm sowing the right seeds into lives here. That's what we're doing here. And, 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 and see, many people are trying to, they're, they're trying to catch a break. If I could just catch a break, if I could just catch something, then everything would be fine. No, 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 no. Let's switch. Let's switch this around. I'm not here to catch a break and make life easy. I'm here because I'm staying committed to my household. I'm staying committed to my commitments. That's what I'm going to do here. Noah's family. Think about this. Noah's family. There's no way Noah could do this without the help of his kids. Now, most of the time, most likely, two of his boys were out getting trees, getting lumber, working it, and probably one of the other boys was with the, da the daughter-in-laws and the mom. They probably would not have left them alone at this point, especially in an evil, messed up world that they were in at this point. So his kids were also involved in what was unpopular. They might have even experienced ridicule in and of themselves, but his kids family had a commitment to the purposes of God. Like I, like I look at it like this, like, like in this house, we build arcs. <laughs> so if y'all want to be a part of this house, we build arcs. This is, we're, in the, we're in the arc building business. We do what God wants us to do. And I want to encourage parents out there to be very clear on in my home, this is what we do. Like, listen, I'm, I, the, the fast forwarding, there was a flood and the ark protected them and they were on the ark over 300 days and then they came on dry land and, and it, there's, there's this, that, that's the miraculous story, okay? That, that's the story of Noah. Could you imagine Noah when it's starting to rain? Well, well, kids, if you just need to get, have your own faith and if you want to get on the ark, you get on the ark and if you don't, it's okay. No, it was like, you got to get on the ark. There's a flood coming. Listen, you're the parent. The, your, your kids aren't supposed to be your friends. You're, they're supposed to be your kids. Lead them. Lead strong here. And I think we have too many people like, well, they just got to find their own way and do their own thing. No, in this house, this is what we do. I'm, I'm never apologetic that in my house, this is, how, this is what we do. Now, in your house, you may be different. I respect that. But, but I think that's what we experience here. We go to church. We give generously. We serve. That's what we do because that's who we are. We are devoted to God. We are moved with godly fear and we're staying committed to this household here. And he was preparing this ark of safety, of salvation for his family. And may we once again return to protecting and working for the salvation of our families for the salvation of our lives and our kids here. Yeah. See, Noah's daughter-in-laws, they didn't, they didn't marry into money, but they married into covenant. A covenant. When people marry into our family, listen, you're not getting, the, the inheritance, it, it, it just isn't there. But what you do get, you get covenant relationship. You get a covenant with God. That's what we get a part of, and that's what our households stand for here. But let's take a moment, and let's talk about Mrs. Noah. Mrs. Noah, remarkably, in the whole story, she's quiet. But let me tell you my perception of what I think about Mrs. Noah. That, that there's no way Noah could have done what he did without Mrs. Noah saying, keep going, you're doing great, don't give up, affirming encouraging and speaking life to him. There's no way she could, he could have done it without this. And, and ladies out there, not just, not just wives, all women, 
We need to speak affirming things that, that represent authentic manhood in the church because men aren't hearing this outside. And if you, you may be, uh, it may be older, over 50 crowd. Well, that gives you the chance to speak to young men redemptively. That gets you an opportunity to speak to young men and encourage them because no wires are getting crossed. Yeah. See, when you're younger, speaking to younger, wires get crossed. But when you're older, you can speak redemptively and life-giving and affirming. That's who God's created you to be. And that's a good household here. So ladies, where have you gotten your mindset about men? Has it come from pain, shame, and blame, and hurt? Or has it come from biblical? I'm challenging all of us to look at biblical, authentic manhood. We can experience this. But we got to stay committed and stay committed to our values and stay committed day in and day out. That's right. Real men aren't afraid to go first. That's right. Real men love sacrifice. They love giving up their money and their time and their energy for their families and for God and for church. They enjoy that. It brings life to them. Yeah. They're willing to take blame even when they're not responsible for it. They're willing to say, I'm going to go first. I'll do this. That's what real men do. And that's what we're talking about here. What woman wouldn't want to be under that type of relationship where they're nurtured and cared for and loved and the best is brought out in them? That's what authentic manhood does. Yeah, 2 Peter 2, 5. And God did not spare the ancient world except for Noah and seven others. Noah warned the world of God's righteous judgment. So Noah was protected. Here's where the inheritance is. Here's what we do. He condemned the world and the world looked at him and because of the way he lived, the world saw an example. And the world is begging for men who aren't waiting for a handout and don't just take, 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 but they give and they give joyfully and they're men of honor and men of respect. This is what our world is missing here. So Noah had to work. That's right, he chopped trees by day and he preached by night. He had to work and he had a witness. And he, those two things lined up and he experienced biblical manhood. He experienced an inheritance. That's right. He did this for his family. He did this for others here. So God is asking us as men to step forward. So here it is. Here it is. Faith requires risk. Noah took a risk. He took a huge risk, but God took a risk on Noah and Noah took a risk on God. But this is what we were created for as men to take risk. Let me give you an example. On August 4th, we are going to have an outdoor worship experience in downtown Pittsburgh where 10 churches are getting together to worship and honor God together. And we're going to worship God and have baptisms and we're going to uh, praise and worship and pray. It's going to be awesome. And, and I don't know that this has ever happened on a Sunday morning before. So there's a huge risk in asking people. There's a risk, will we have enough money? There's a risk of, will, will we have enough churches? Will we have enough people? How about this risk? What if it rains? It's going to be outdoor. Huh. Noah's problem was, what if he does all this? What if he does all of these things and it doesn't rain? He took a risk because that's what faith is. Will I have enough money? Will I have enough time? Will I have enough en energy? Do I have what it takes? But, but faith requires risk. And I think there's some men right now that I'm speaking to where the problem is, is you're waiting for life to get easier so that you can step forward in faith. You're waiting for something to change so you can be who God's created you to be. No, God's created you for risk. And no man, no authentic man wants and desires to be considered safe. Oh, he's a safe man. Oh, he doesn't take risk. No, we were created for this. In real biblical manhood says, I'm going to believe God and I'm going to give like there's no tomorrow. I'm going to serve. I'm going to love my wife. I am going to love my family. I'm going to become what God wants me to become and be these things because of who God created me to be. So what is the risk that you can't afford not to take? What is it? Relating to another man? Asking questions to another man? That's a risk that many men right now, God is asking you to take. Will you sit down with another man and just simply ask questions? 
I do this all the time because I want to be an authentic man. I want to be God's man here and I don't want to play it safe. So what is the commitment God's asking of you today? What's the commitment? Is it being devoted to God? Well, then just simply go to God for salvation, for atonement. Go to God and say, God, I need you today. Just pray it in your simple words. But as a man of God, what's the commitment? Is it time to be devoted to God? Is it time that you need to move in godly fear? Or is it time to get back to staying committed to your household? And I'm going to become the man God wants me to be. Not a dictator, not a ruler, but a servant, a humble servant. This is it. This is what God has created us to be. An adventure, an adventure full of risk. That's what it is. So I have three things I want to speak to every man right now. Right now, I believe in you. I believe in you. I believe that God's created you and put you here on this earth for such a time as this, for such a place. Number two, you're not alone. Stop feeling alone. You haven't been created to do life alone. Get with other men in your life. Get with it. Get into church. Get into a small group. Get with other men who can speak redemptively to you. So I believe in you. You're not alone. And I want to tell you it can be done. You can. You will live authentic biblical manhood when we, when we are devoted to God. You listen, moved with godly fear and committed to our household. You have what it takes. You can. You will. We will do this together. Listen, happy Father's Day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. Come back next week. We're going to get back to our series, What Do I Believe About Sin and Humanity? Going to be good. You don't want to miss it. What a great and challenging message from Pastor Rick. You know, if you want to make Jesus the forgiver of your past and the leader of, into your future, click the I want to know Jesus button. Someone from our response team will reach out to you and help you with your vital next step in this relationship with God. It'll be the best decision that you have ever made. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. well, we love you. Have a great and happy Father's Day, everyone.